How to not be a complete scrub lord in medieval mode. It's possible to play in third person mode in medieval mode by using the console command tf underscore medieval underscore third person space one. This is different than regular third person mode as it doesn't require any cheats and it's also a sort of over the shoulder angle. Do you hate that everything changes in chat? Like when people say things it's translated over using filters and stuff to an old timey sort of English? Do you have something important to say that you wish would not be changed over in any sort of way? Well, just start the sentence with an exclamation point or a slash and everything you say will just be said as is and not be changed over at all. Want to jump out of the castle without taking any fall damage? Go to the right side of the castle on the top floor and jump on top of the sign and then jump down. This path exists. It's possible to climb over here, just go around and sort of like walk around in this far off area on the cliff side. This is a good path to take in a situation where retreat is necessary. It's out of the way and not many people know about it, so it's possibly a good hiding space and maybe also a good sniping space. As a down man with a shield, it's possible to use this rock formation to charge jump. This is useful to get on top of the castle before the castle gates are open. When exiting or entering the castle, when walking through this huge choke point, make sure you hug the left or right wall. Hugging the wall makes it so there's less chance of getting hit by projectiles. If you're heavy on offense with the buffalo steak sandwich equipped, start eating it as soon as the timer says 3. If timed correctly, as soon as the animation is finished of eating the sandwich, the gates will be completely open and the round will begin at the exact moment that the heavy can start moving again. Climbing up to the spawn in the castle makes it possible to shoot projectiles directly into blue team spawn door. This is the castle gate on the Groot Keep. The three things to note about it are, projectiles could go through the openings, it can crush players, and this one's weird, it can impale players. Touching the very bottom of the gate while it's open is lethal. Avoid combat directly under it as knockback damage that sends you upward could possibly mean that you're dead. Here's some weapon tips. Tip number one, don't, and I repeat, don't use any bleed weapons. Bleed weapons like the Travel Man's Shiv, the Boston Basher, the Rap Assassin, and the Southern Hospitality are like garbage. What happens in a, in a fight when you're playing this, this mode out, when, when, actually, when gameplay actually applies, you fight them, they fight you, you get a hit in, they get a hit in. You, they kill you because your, your melee weapon is suboptimal, it does less damage, it's a crappy, it's a crappy bleed weapon. And then they pick, the, they pick up the health pack that dropped on the ground from your dead body. This causes them to heal and stop bleeding immediately, completely nullifying the whole reason behind using bleed weapons in the first place. It's as if you did nothing, you were pointless and you were stupid, you meleeed them, it was stupid and pointless, you, you chose the wrong weapons to pick in this situation. The only exception to this rule I have to say is probably the flying guillotine as it's a ranged weapon. The sharpened volcano fragment suffers from the same problems as bleed weapons. Damage over time that can be healed by a small health pack is pointless and bad. On the other hand, it's worth noting, if you're working with another player like a scout using the sun on a stick, or a pyro using an extinguisher, it may be more viable. Weapon tip number two! Equip usable items in every slot. If you're a sniper, use a huntsman or a huntsman reskin. If you have a secondary weapon that's not an SMG, use it as well. I mean, it's just common sense, right? An empty slot is worse than using something. Another obvious thing to note, mechs can use the crusader's crossbow, Devilman can equip the booties, a shield, and a melee weapon. Soldiers can equip backpacks, etc, etc, etc. Weapon tip number three. Here are just some examples of sort of like noteworthy things about weapons that may be overlooked or whatever. The Soldier's Disciplinary Action Melee Weapon. On cursory glance, it's just a regular melee weapon, but it actually has a 70% increased melee reach that's just a hidden stat on the weapon. The Power's best melee weapon is probably the Back Scratcher, followed by the Power Jack. The Backscratcher really excels because there are so many small health packs around. It's almost as if this weapon was made for this mode. And it actually probably was because they came out at the same time. When playing defense and there are enemies on the final point, it may be a good idea as a demo man to switch to the Yulipool Caper, clear out the final point, and then switch back to whatever weapon you were using previously. As a heavy, don't use the Fist of Steel. It's horrible. 90%, 99% of the damage you take is from melee weapons. Also don't use the gloves of running urgency. It's much better to just use the buffalo steak sandwich as a secondary weapon. As a scout, the sun on a stick, the fan of war, and the atomizer are subpar weapon choices. When it comes to weapon selection, try to use your better judgement. Certain weapons like the market gardener, the home wrecker, the gunboats, the vita saw, the uber saw, these things interact with gameplay mechanics that don't exist in medieval mode, so don't use these weapons. The last thing to note about medieval mode is that unlike regular Team Fortress 2, it's way way less balanced. 
Like, for example, the engineer class is pretty much unplayable. They can't build or destroy any buildings. They have nothing usable in their primary slot. They have nothing usable in their secondary slot. And their best melee weapon is, I don't know, the gunslinger? For how little the engineer can do, for what sets them apart, pretty much just play a pyro and you're automatically a better engineer. On the flip side, there's also a clear winner for what's the most overpowered thing in medieval mode. Out of everything possible, the most powerful loadout, the most best, strongest thing in Team Fortress 2 medieval mode, is the Killing Gloves of Boxing Heavy. A heavy with the Killing Gloves of Boxing and possibly also a Buffalo Steak Sandwich can just go around. As soon as they get a kill, bam, like 12 other kills in a row. And that's the video. Thanks for watching. Like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more videos like this one. At the end of the day, play TF2 how you want. Don't just believe, don't just listen to me, don't just do what I say. If I say a certain strategy or a certain weapon in medieval mode is suboptimal, it doesn't mean you can't do well with it. You should go forth and play TF2 how you like. It could even be a fun sort of personal challenge. I don't know. It's your life. Go forth, have fun. C'est la vie. Thanks for watching. Au revoir.